okay, I wanted to do a little before and after with uh, some of the guns that I'm modifying. I've had several requests to show more of these. So this year I'm going to try to do a lot more of these kind of uh, not so much how to's, but at least it's going to show you the process that I go through. And if you want to try to figure it out on your own, of course, more power to you. And I'm happy to help if you have questions. So now that I have a 3D printer, it really opens up a lot of the customization I can do with my different gel blasters. And lately I've been looking at the AK-47 because there's a lot of options out there based off of Airsoft AK-47s. So the specs are close, but they're not perfect. So a lot of these things I print, you still have to end up modifying. So there's still going to be some filing and sanding. Uh, luckily, I have a lot of bench top sanders, spindle sanders, belt sanders, disc sanders, you know, that really help speed up the process. Uh, you could do it by hand, too. It just take a lot longer. And then I have a lot of power sanders as well. So this is going to be my next AK-47 build. And I wanted to go ahead and show you what I've got ready here, right? So we can see some different 3D parts. We'll talk about that. So here's the main kind of body of the Anstoy AK-47 or AKM-47 large, Milsim. Um, and this is going to allow it to be used um, as intended. Like I won't be modifying anything so that, uh, you know, the, sometimes I modify things where this is shortened and then this piece can't be taken out, which is fine. Um, just the way this one works, it's going to allow this to just, you know, stay in the same kind of footprint. All I really had to do on modifications here, as you can see, I had to cut a small area here, and I'll show you why. And then there's little pieces that stick up here that actually hold like this type of piece on. So there's a couple pieces over on this side where they would be raised. So I had to file, you know, or sand those down. And then I even had to sand this area just down a little bit more too. Okay. So those were the modifications to the main part. So the reason why I had to cut here is because I wanted this front grip handle to line up with that. And it was a little too long. All right. And also because, again, this is made for an Airsoft AK-47, a little slightly different specs, there's a little small piece on the 3D printed part that I had to cut off just right there. But you can see now that's going to fit on there. Obviously, this is the other side. So those are going to fit on there just like I intended. And they're going to go right to the end like I intended. The next piece I printed was a top piece. So this is going to go on here. And you can't tell, but this would be up here in place, right? So that's going to fill up that space, and then you're going to have this piece right here. So um, it's going to be slightly short, so I'm going to have to figure out something I can do to fill this spot in. So I'll find out something. Otherwise, I'll just maybe just have to leave it and see how it looks. I think it'll look okay. So I'm not too worried about it. There's always something you can use to... The only thing that would be exposed, I guess, would be right here. So I might be able to find something to fill that in so that it doesn't look out of place. We will see. All right, lastly, the only other 3D printed part, this. And this one I didn't have to do too much with, but this is just going to let you go ahead and basically, you know, have a rail mount out here, which is kind of cool, right? And it still works with this piece still go in. So I'll have to push it in hard. I don't want to do it right now because I don't want it to get stuck. So that's what I got going when it comes to customizing. So a lot of 3D parts. Took a while to print some of these bigger ones. Um, otherwise, I'll reuse a blue handle. I'll reuse a blue magazine. I'm going to paint it. That's why I've got that taped off. Really, that's the only part you need to tape off on these magazines. Um, if you paint the whole magazine, then when you try to put it in here, it just it sticks it because it just makes it a little too wide. So I usually just tape right across the top like that. And then the connections on top, of course, you could take this completely apart, but I found that this leaving intact and painting it still turns out just fine. So that's just what I do. Of course, these pieces will get painted. Everything will get painted. Uh, when it comes to painting, wash everything good, soap and water, let it dry, 
haven't had issues with this plastic taking paint. Some of the other guns I have, but with these, it seems to be pretty good. Um, some of the paints I've had okay luck with. This is, um, you know, an easy, cheap one. You can find at any hardware store. The Rosoleum two-time paint primer made for, you know, bonds to plastic. That's important. And then these are some fancy kind of RC paints that I've had pretty good luck with. So Spaz Sticks, and they have all the different candy ones. Tamaya, or Tamiya, which again, and then Dura, Dura Tracks. So these are much more expensive. These little cans cost more than a big can like that. So I'd start with these. I got a good deal from someone on uh, Facebook Marketplace who was selling a bunch of those. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have experimented with them. But those have worked probably the best so far, and they've got the coolest kind of colors, those different candy paint ones I show you. All right, so this went a lot longer than I thought, but it gave you a good idea of what goes into these. And the ideas just kind of come from me looking through 3D files, seeing what I can use, and then kind of just putting it together in my head and going from there. So we'll get those all washed down. We'll start painting them, and I'll do a video at the end when it's ready to go.